Hello, and welcome to Shaman Sisters Sessions, episode 51, How to Raise Your Vibration, or Raising Your Vibration. I am Catherine Bird. I'm here with my beautiful shaman sister, Michelle Hawk. And we have created this podcast out of our conversations around our businesses, our healing work, shamanic work, the evolution of consciousness on the planet, and everything in between, and wanted to bring these to you to give you some, some further insights and awarenesses and tools that you can be using as we are all in this together in these healing processes and, and uh, seeking to support the world. So we are talking about raising your vibration today which is an exciting topic. We were both kind of shocked that we hadn't had this as a topic yet. It's, it's funny because now we're, we're building out topics lists after be doing this for a year, over a year now, and having over 50 episodes. And so whenever we come up with something amazing, we're like, oh my gosh, I haven't believed, I can't believe we haven't talked about this yet. Like, this is so mm -hmm. important. Especially and, because this is such a fundamental piece of doing yeah. this work at all. It's and so we've talked fundamental, I think, that we didn't, you know, we just, we, we talk about it a lot in, in a lot of our episodes in different ways. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, this, this came up because I am running an Open Your Channel course, and then Michelle is coming down to help facilitate the Open Your Channel retreat in February. We're so excited about, and in um, creation of the curriculum, uh, there was a, a huge portion of raising your vibration, and what does it mean, and why do we do it, and how do we do it, and, and why should we care? So I really wanted to kind of step in with Michelle and dig deeper into this topic. So super happy to be doing this with you today, Michelle. Yeah, I think it's especially vital around this time of year when you know we just went through the holidays we had the new year and we've been kind of sitting in the new year for a couple of weeks now and this is the time when pretty much everybody just seems to get like you know a little bit weighed down or just all that momentum that we had sort of hustling through the end of the year kind of falls away and then it's like okay now like do to do until springtime and so it's important during this time that we keep our vibration really at the forefront of our minds because it can be easy, especially for those of us in the rainy Pacific Northwest, to fall into a little bit of a slump. And that's not to say that having a high vibration and being in sort of an internal reflective winter space are mutually exclusive. They're not. You can still go inward you can still be pretty much internal you can enjoy all the cozy snuggling up that winter has to offer and also keep your vibration high and feeling good and personally i'm really glad we're talking about this today i've been really putting myself through a lot of interesting sort of stress lately and i feel as though this is very timely for me to remind myself of things that i already know but you know kind of as we go through that like oh yeah i need to do that and i need to do that so perfect timing in my world mm -hmm. so yay yay um so let's let's talk about just kind of what we're what are we saying like what what does it mean you know what does it mean to raise your vibration mm -hmm. like, we hear it so much and it's, it's kind of, you know, buzzwordy at this point of, you know, rage and vibration, but what does it really mean? Yeah. I think there's some misconception around it too, you know, because there's a whole lot of um, what I like to call law of attraction shaming mm -hmm. that has made itself prevalent. And we've discussed this before, um, not at ever great length, but in various episodes, there's a lot of, well, okay, if something in your life is going this way that you don't like, you need to fix yourself because you're causing it, you know? And so it's a, it's a blaming thing. And it's like, oh, because your vibration is low, this unfortunate thing is happening. And it is not synonymous. I would say having a high vibration is not synonymous with being that like, oh, happy-go-lucky, you know, like that is sort of that 
you know what I mean? I feel like there's a lot of whitewashing sort of pressure to be happy and just like glossing over all the unfortunate stuff or glossing over all the, um, the realness, the rawness, the, we have painful moments. We have frustrating moments. We have stressful moments. And that doesn't mean that it, it's not important. It doesn't mean that it's like sucking down our vibration. And actually like there is a service to be had from experiencing those moments where we, by working through it, we do raise our vibration and it is possible to maintain a high vibration while working in the shadow. So I want to first make that very clear of shadow work does not equal low vibration necessarily. Super vital. This is probably one of the most important pieces because we see a lot of this like high vibe, like high vibe tribe, like, oh, you know, you know, be, be your best, most sparkly self, you know, embrace your inner unicorn. And uh, like th this is going to solve all your problems and you're going to all of a sudden, you know, be skyrocketing in your business and your relationship's going to be perfect. And you're going to always be happy and smiling. And uh, we are truly doing ourselves a disservice and doing others a disservice because like you're saying, it's it being doing the shadow work in, it does not mean you're not high vibe. And the, the crazy part is that the process of raising your vibration will often mess you up so hard that you will feel like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm like at the lowest point ever sometimes. And that is part of the process of your system signaling you, oh, this is the stuff that's not in alignment with this vibration that you're trying to cultivate. This and this and this and clean this up and do this and take care of yourself in a different way and look at your relationship and look at your business and everything. And that is actually oftentimes not fun. It doesn't feel like we're going to the beach and we're jumping around and we're swimming with dolphins. It kind of feels like, oh my gosh, I've just messed, you know, I've just, it's like, oh, I was trying to raise my vibration and I just messed myself up. Well, no, this vibration that you're cultivating within yourself is telling you, it's giving you clues as to stuff that need to be cleaned up from your past, from your childhood, especially old traumas and emotions that are stuck in your system like all that stuff starts to come up and often is like oh it sucks and it's painful and it's gross and it doesn't mean that vibration isn't isn't elevating it actually sometimes is an amazing signal that that's exactly what is going on mm -hmm. on a really deep level yeah so please don't equate i feel shitty equals vi low vibration doesn't necessarily mean that just the same like I feel awesome doesn't necessarily equal high vibration. So there, you know, first of all, have that in mind. But when we're speaking about high vibration versus low vibration, you know, I know everybody who's tuning into this podcast probably has basic familiarity with our energy body, with our auric field, with our uh, how we're moving energy through our physical systems. When we have a high vibration, it means that we are able to run more energy through our physical and energetic systems, through our hearts, through our, uh, our different channels. We're able to run more fine-tuned frequencies and higher frequencies through our systems, and we're able to tune into greater layers of subtlety whenever we're doing intuitive work, psychic work, healing work, uh, or tuning in with our guides and teachers. As we, and so this is in the context of open your channel, Kat, as you were mentioning when we were um, doing the first class last week, when you're starting your work there, you're going to be able to hold a different kind of container, a different kind of energetic container when your vibration is lower, as opposed to really working to cultivate your high vibration frequency means in the context of channeling, you're going to be able to bring through different beings that otherwise you might not be able to because your system will be different. So for those of you who are practitioners who are tuning in, I know just from kind of looking at this list of who's watching, like I know there's a whole bunch of you who are practitioners or work in the field or, um, or healers, psychics, mediums, etc. It is really, really important if you want to be bringing through that really powerful 
and subtle and fine-tuned frequencies that your vibration is big enough and high enough to actually hold that. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's not something that happens, you know, overnight all at once. We do have some radical shifts in vibration that occur, which we often will feel in a very real way, which can have a whole set of other symptomology that can come up come along with it so maybe we can discuss a little bit of that too uh, but that often we'll have sort of a, a raise of frequency and then sort of a plateauing point and then maybe another and a plateauing point and so it's it's happening in a, a, a subtle way for a lot of people and at times it can happen in such a radical way that it is a little bit shocking and disorienting so knowing that either one is possible and probably you will experience both maybe at different mm -hmm. times. Yeah. Speaking to that a little bit, I, um, I'm kind of wondering what you've noticed. I mean, I've noticed certain things in personally for my own uh, up leveling and various uh, evolutions of my own work and my consciousness, but then also in my students and in my clients, it seems like a lot of the really dramatic kind of wake up calls and the really big shifts happen earlier in the journey. It's like, you know, spirit needs to shake us up a little bit and get our attention. And then as we continue to raise our vibration, it's, it becomes less and less obvious. It's because we're going to greater realms of subtlety where we don't need to be shaken up in that same way. We're more fine tuned. We're getting into the, like little tiny changes that are still important and still really significant, but they don't feel that same level of bam, getting smacked in the head. Absolutely. Uh, that's, that's, that was my personal experience and, and has been that it, it, we do become more and more subtle and uh, sometimes it, it, sometimes it feels like for some people, they miss that, right? We, we're, we're all like adrenaline intensity junkies. So, you know, they're like, ah, oh, well, I miss that in a way. Am I not advancing anymore? Um, no, that's, that's not a thing. Or you haven't stopped advancing because it, you're not like sweating and shaking and freaking out, you know, for most of the day and unable mm -hmm. to actually control what's going on your system has upgraded to the point where the intensity isn't needed to cleanse and purify. So a lot of that experience that occurs is a, is a function of the cleansing and purification that needs to happen throughout the physical and the energetic bodies in order for the vibration to raise. It's, it's sort of like if we, you know, if, if we had a, um, like a two liter, liter, you know, plastic bottle and we had sand in it and we put it in the water, it would sink. And the more that we clean the sand out, the more it's going to float up to the surface and start to become buoyant. And it's the same thing as it, it's like, even in the process, if you were going to get wet sand out of a two liter bottle, it would be like pounding on the bottom and like shaking and trying to stick a stick in there and poke it out. It would be kind <laughs> of intense experience. And that's basically what's happening to us is that we're getting this gritty sand out of our system, which can feel quite intense. But the more that comes out and the more space there is, the more room there is for things to move, the easier it becomes over time. So that's really weird, huh? <laughs> I love that image. That's great. I think that describes a lot of people's experience really well. So I'm kind of curious if you're watching and you feel like chatting in like, oh yeah, I've been that bottle of sand. So like, yeah, me too. Um, so yeah, so let's talk a little bit about what are some of the things that people are experience? What is a, um, in addition to that feeling of being knocked around a little bit, um, there's a whole lot of things going around about like ascension flu or ascension symptoms. Um, been through the gauntlet these last few months. Yes, indeed. Yeah, I hear you. Absolutely. Um, and Kat, I thought it was so funny. Um, you posted something about like, you know, lightworkers get colds too. Like not everything is a sign of ascension flu. So let's talk about that because that 
that is a thing, you know, where yes, there are symptoms of this increase in vibration and frequency. And yet also like, you know, light workers get colds too. How do we tell the difference? <laughs> well, yeah, because basically if you start Googling around and let's face it, if you have a symptom in anything and you start Googling around, you're like, you're down the rabbit hole and now you're, you're, you're coming up with something crazy that you have. And, uh, you know, there are so many symptoms as we're going through this process of that, like purging and cleansing and purifying and opening and, and allowing more light to stream through our system where it can feel very much like a flu, a, a flu and, or, you know, very bad cold and you can have fevers and sweats and, uh, trembling and shaking, dizziness, uh, you know, pretty much anything, anything that you could have nausea, um, you know, anything that seems like it could be the flu and maybe it's, maybe it's not, it, that, that is something that happens. Um, mm -hmm. you, sleeping a lot, not being able to sleep at all. Uh, what else you got, Michelle? What are some of the other things that, that happen? Yeah, well, I want to talk a little bit about um, sickness in general and, you know, kind of the biological function of these feeling sick symptoms and then how that informs our understanding in the, the light work and the up-leveling our vibration, the raising our vibration process. The symptoms that we experience, you know, when we get a cold or when we get a fever or whatever, that's actually the healing response. That's the, and you know, those of you watching probably know this, but it's when we are having, you know, the cough and the sniffly nose and the fever and the sweating and everything, that's our body mobilizing, moving more energy and raising its frequency in order to eliminate the things that are low vibration. Yeah. So it's that same concept whenever you know people are experiencing the ascension flu that's the body mobilizing these different cells moving energy through the different pathways and it's the healing response in order to kind of raise up to that next level and so it's kind of like that same if we understand it biologically we can apply that metaphysically as well um, again it's nothing wrong it might be super uncomfortable and um, you know, just kind of roll with it and understand, okay, this is my body doing what it needs to do to heal itself, release whatever's in the way. And ultimately when we run energy through new pathways, it's going, probably going to feel uncomfortable. Think about, for example, the first time, you know, if you're doing a, a new exercise regimen or like a, a weight training or something, and you go in your first day and you're blasting through your weight training exercises and you're doing all these brand new exercises, you're going to be sore, right? Because it's new pathways, new muscle groups that you're activating. Same deal with moving energy through these different pathways. Like it might feel really exhilarating in certain ways and it might make you super tired. It might make you kind of grouchy. It might um, feel as though you're pushing all these edges in a really big way because you're bringing energy to areas of your body and your auric field that historically haven't had that particular flavor of vibration. So raising your vibration again, can think of like all these ways that we up level our nutrition. You know, as soon as you start changing your nutrition, your body takes a while to recalibrate. Same thing. And so anything can happen and there's there's all kinds of things that 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 people go through as they're raising the vibration um of the the body needing different things needing new uh amounts of time to sleep or needing to spend more time alone or um it's it's like you start to to become more clear on different things that you maybe didn't need before. Oh, I need to eat these these particular foods and these vegetables. I need to not eat this. Um, there's a, a lot that that our system starts feedbacking to us as we're going through this process of like yeah, that used to be really fun to go to the club and and dance, but now it feels super overwhelming. And I need to back off and maybe stop drinking alcohol or, or whatever it is that are the more that we can listen to what's coming through and honor ourselves as to, okay, my body's telling me that, that I need to fast today. 
my body's telling me that I need to go and eat a bunch of, you know, root vegetables and meat because I really need to ground some of this energy. Um, the more that we can be in this conversation with ourselves over, it's okay that I might radically change very quickly and all of a sudden not want to do something that I used to do all the time or want to change my relationship or my job or, or any of these things and to sit with ourselves and, and listen and, and develop a, a deeper level of listening, I think is a huge part of this process. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think there's, um, in our, when did we do that episode? It was, um, it's so funny. I'm all like messed up in my order of our episodes. Cause I was looking through some to send to a client and, you know, I was going way back in the archives. So I think we did a long time ago actually, but you know, all these different functions that we've spoken about before about intuition and discernment and, um, and your psychic abilities and walking the shamanic path, all of these other functions, it's, it is all related to the raising of the vibration. Ultimately, you know, if we're looking at the why, so like why, if it means that it's going, like we might lose relationships and we might, you know, significantly alter our lifestyle and we're going to feel like we have the flu and, you know, we're going to feel super shitty. Like why, why do we want to raise our vibration? Who would want to do such a thing? Yeah. <laughs> well, because the more that we actually clean out these lower level aspects of ourselves, uh, you know, our, our old stories in a lot of ways, our old responses and emotional mechanisms to how we engage with the world, our old habits and patterns, which are keeping us maybe stuck in a certain place or, you know, like whatever it is that our distractions, the things that we do on a regular basis that aren't actually supporting our life as those things get cleaned up and cleared out, we become more connected to light, more connected to our spiritual guides and mentors. We become more aware of our soul uh, reasonings and path and purpose on the planet. Our mission becomes much clearer and we start to walk that path in a strong way where before perhaps we, we had the experience of, like, well, I'm doing this because it makes sense. I'm doing this because it's what I was supposed to do. I'm doing this because my parents told me to. I'm doing this because my teacher said that I was good at this. I'm doing this because it was the right thing to do. And now we can start to shift ourselves into truly living a life that is serving something that's much deeper and more profoundly connected to who we are on an innate level so that we feel like, wow, I'm, I'm actually doing the work that I was brought here to do. And I am, I am involved in the service that I see has an important effect on the planet. And it, I have a meaning. I have a meaningful life. And in the end, I believe that, that for human beings, if we, can, if we can create a meaningful life for ourselves, then a lot of the suffering and depression and, and uh, conflict that we see within ourselves will dissipate and, and no longer exist. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's really important to consider the service and impact aspect or, um, in terms of raising our vibration increases our capacity to be, like you were saying, creating a meaningful life and ultimately can contributing really like living a creative as opposed to a consumptive life. That's another thing is when we're in low vibration, we're consuming, right? Because we're, our bodies like to be high vibration. Our, our spirits like to be high vibration and, you know, kind of looking at some of these tendencies of people who are in this really low vibration, there's subconscious, um, you know, unhealthy and addictive patterns. There's, um, and yet, I would say most people, when exposed to something truly high vibration, want that option, you know, or so like, look at, we've mentioned some of these studies before, Kat, where like, um, you know, the, the rats, for example, where you have rats who are given a choice between 
um, getting to snuggle with each other and like, you know, they get the rats addicted to heroin and then they give them the option to cuddle and like go play with the other rats. And then they'll like stop being addicted to heroin and they'll go snuggle and they'll go have rat friends. Right. I mean, <laughs> rat park study. So look up the rat park study. Rat park study. I'm, I'm paraphrasing that absolutely horribly, but I mean, this is an example of, okay, they, <laughs> when given the choice between low vibration and high vibration, we naturally gravitate toward the thing that really feeds us, the thing that really is, that feels good. And of course, yes, of course, there are people and um, people who are stuck in some really unhealthy addictive patterns and um, low vibration choices. And yet there is this deep hunger where we feel like when we're exposed to that and when we have that as an option, we gravitate toward that. You know, there was this movie that, or this documentary that I saw a little trailer for recently as well, um, looking at one of the highest risk schools. It was a high school where the kids in this high school, it was like one of the worst, most at-risk groups of students for, um, for drug addiction and crime and um, gang activity and violence and all this stuff. And they instituted these, um, you know, just like unconditional love. The teachers, from what I understand from the trailer, you know, like these teachers all went in and had training and just, you know, straight up compassion. And that's it. Like, that's the only thing that changed is just viewing instead of like problem kids to like, I love you unconditionally. And I know that that's not you making those choices right now. That's because you don't know what else to do. And it turned around like everybody in the school, you know, their graduation rate like went through the roof and everybody's GPA went up and attendance went up and all these good things. Because again, when we're, when we have that choice, like we gravitate towards the thing that feels genuinely good. Well, I, you know, I think that we, you know, we mistake, right? Because we don't have access to that. So we don't know it exists. Um, so we mistake, we mistake, uh, we mistake the, the dopamines and the adrenaline and these different chemicals that we have going off in our system when we do drugs or eat or have sex with strangers or get in a fight or race our car or gamble and all of the things that we do to get that tiny touch of the chemicals that are like, oh, that there's, like, there's a good feeling there. And so it's a, it's just a mistaken way that we're trying to get to that place and, and through those processes, actually lowering our vibration, coming in contact with beings that are of a lower frequency who love that stuff, who want to hang out with that stuff and then start hanging out with you, hanging out with that stuff and doing those things and slowly going through this process of this lowering of the vibrational frequency. And on the other end of the spectrum, the more that we hang out with people who are, you know, in compassion and love and, and forgiveness and uh, service and, uh, you know, whatever it is, prayer and uh, joy, dancing, singing, laughing, playing, we actually raise our vibration and we become healthier, we become more vital and alive. And so it's not just like spiritual, like very spiritual, oh, I need to meditate and I need to do this and I need to do these things that we you know, know that we should be doing as spiritual people. But it's also the, the, like, the basic things. It's, it's watching something funny instead of something really you know, grotesque and, and horror. And, and you know, it's going out with your friends and and actually having deep conversations with them instead of, you know, I don't know, playing, playing nasty video games where you're killing people or whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, it's the little choices for, you know, for those people who are kind of at that place. And a lot of us are guides, we're, we're healers and we're coaches and we're working with people who maybe are still stuck in this old way of being. And to say, oh, well, you need to meditate uh, three times a day <laughs> isn't going to really hit their jam. It's like, oh, no, go watch a funny movie and uh, start to have a gratitude practice and 
these little things that we sometimes forget. Oh yeah, that, that actually raises my vibration to have a gratitude practice. That raises my vibration to go dancing. It raises my vibration to, uh, you know, for me, it's like to make art, like that's to garden. Those are, those things also raise my vibration. It doesn't have to just be the spiritual part things that are on the spiritual checklist that are actually raising our vibrational frequency. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a, a really important thing is that we, I speak for myself here, but I have a feeling I'm speaking for a lot of people is that we forget the obvious, you know? So like asking yourself, have I eaten recently? That's a, a, usually a big one for me because I'll go for, you know, periods of time where I forget to eat or I get busy or like I don't eat properly or don't eat enough. And then I'm, I feel really like just out of it and not great and not in my body. And it's a simple, like very simple, observable physical effect. Like it's stupid, obvious. And yet I keep forgetting it. Right. And so, or like, have you taken a shower recently? Did you get enough <laughs> sleep? Like, I'm, you know, seriously, especially for us self-employed people, like I'll sit around and you know, it'll be Michelle's still wearing pajama bottom, bottoms right now. <laughs> I'm not, I'm wearing like, I'm wearing an actual outfit right now. That's like, but quite often, yeah, I'll just like wear my pajama pants and, and then, you know, sometimes that's fine. And then there are days when like, that's not cutting it. And it's yeah. like, my, you know, so right. you're exactly. learning way more about me than <laughs> go on walks, go on walks in nature. I mean, no. sometimes it's like, Oh, just light a candle and say a tiny prayer. And yep. it's so little. And, you know, there are, um, <laughs> pajama, pajama pants are so high vibe <laughs> yeah thank you especially fantastic leopard print ones like I've got yeah you know so it's like it can be the small things it can be the little things that raise our vibration mm -hmm. but you know let's talk a little bit about some other stuff that that raises our vibration and you know yes meditation yes prayer actually um being mindful having a, a nice mindfulness practice of just being self-aware and going through life actually paying attention to yourself and being mindful of what what's coming out of your mouth of mm -hmm. the you know are you gossiping are you like uh being angry at people when you're on the freeway are you like you know engaging in um you know bitch sessions about your you know, whoever, like, these are all little ways that we can raise our vibration. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I want to point people back to an episode that we did, I think it was in September or October about embody the practice. Mm -hmm. We had, we spoke a lot about practice. We had uh, a friend of mine on the show to speak about his work with practice and, um, and Kat, I know this is a big thing that you teach, especially of what are our personal practices, what are our movement practices, journaling practices, etc., that can, we can do every day, very simple thing that we can do for ourselves. And, uh, and that episode, we went really in depth of all these different practices, different ways of working with practice uh, to be in a very high vibration way. It is, it's challenging. Like we can say, oh yeah, just sit and meditate. But in my experience, um, like just sitting and meditating really often is not enough. It needs to be moved through the physical body, through movement, breath, and sound. So anything that you're doing, that you're making sound, you're moving your body, and you're breathing is going to actually work to raise your vibrational frequency. We move a lot of energy out through the breath and through sound, toning and singing is a huge benefit towards raising your vibration. I mean, it's a frequency, it makes sense, right? And so if you have um, not let yourself get into your voice for whatever crazy reason and uh, things that you say about yourself, starting to do some toning or chanting, uh, singing, letting yourself just make sound, even if it's ugly sound or growling and screaming, like letting stuff out, it, it will actually cleanse and purify your whole system. So mm -hmm. super important. Yeah. 
I really like that one. And mantra practice also really good, you know, so, or if you're feel like you need a little bit more guidance and you don't want to just go into free sound mode and just start growling, like, you know, you can look up different mantras to sing, um, or different affirmations to speak as well. If you need a little bit of a, a boost before you get to free growling. Um, but free growling. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Or like my, one of my favorite things to do, I've got this, uh, in terms of the singing and toning practice, I have a giant empty living room where I do events and stuff in my house and no furniture in there on purpose. And so I'll stand in my living room and sing because the acoustics are awesome and everybody sounds better in a giant empty room. And, or, you know, sing in the shower and see what happens as you do that and just have fun with it, really. Um, the it's interesting cat yeah sitting meditation practice honestly doesn't do a whole lot for me either i mean it does it has its time and a place and i enjoy it sometimes but overall i find that my vibration is raised more when it is when i am actively moving something through me so i'm offering that to you um as you're developing that practice or as you're tuning into your own vibration you will start to notice this thing raises my vibration more than this thing and really tuning in with what do I need in this moment when I feel like this, what does that mean? Uh, one thing that I'm doing lately that I've really been quite enjoying, I'm shifting my nutrition a little bit. And in doing so, I'm periodically checking my heart rate throughout the day, especially, you know, like first thing in the morning, um, before I eat anything, after I eat anything, I'm just kind of tracking what is my heart rate in response to these different combinations of of foods and macronutrients. So that means I'm spending, um, usually it ends up being about 10 minutes, maybe longer a day, feeling my heartbeat and just standing there taking my pulse and holding, holding this. So I'm counting my heartbeats for actually probably longer than 10 minutes a day if I'm doing it for a minute several times and before and after each time I eat something that I just get to tune in with my heartbeat and be present with those beats that otherwise I wouldn't really be listening to or wouldn't be tuning into in the same way. Oh. Love yeah. that. Yeah, I feel good. Um, so it has to be mentioned, um, emotional release and catharsis and getting it out, moving it. Like we're talking about moving the body and it really is moving the body. Um, dynamic meditation, which is Osho practice is, extremely powerful you can find videos of that on youtube where it just takes you through a whole journey and through that process of just really moving a lot like moving and moving and moving and pressing like pushing yourself to move to start to to release things out and let go of things and letting yourself cry i have uh, you know, personally experienced it. And then I've had uh, different clients who've had different levels of this based on a lot of times on childhood trauma. But, uh, you know, we repress so much in our life. And then we start to move the energy. And all of a sudden, it's like, oh, wow, now I'm, I feel sad. I feel we might go, oh, I'm depressed. Well, it's possible that really this is just a signal from your system that it needs to release. And so not to judge yourself if every time you do try to sit down and meditate, you're just crying or every time you get in the bathtub, you spend an hour crying or you're crying every single day. Like it is okay for that to be your experience. It is part of your personal process. It does not mean you're broken. It does not mean you're sick or even depressed. It just means that this is something that needs to move through your system. This is how your body is choosing to purge through the tears and the snot and the bawling this energy through you. And it, this too shall pass. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it's okay. And a lot of people really judge themselves harshly when this is their, you know, way of moving energy for a little while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, remember the shadow work is not necessarily low vibration. It can actually be very high vibration to delve into the shadow work. And I think it's important, you know, going back to that bottle of sand idea, we can, when we're thinking about raising our vibration, a lot of the times we're thinking about what can I add in that is high frequency. It's also, Kat, like you're talking about, what can I release that doesn't belong? Or what can I release that's in the way, like taking up energetic space, that would otherwise be full of high frequency energy. 
So the releasing part of, or the releasing and catharsis part is just as important as what are you adding in to raise your vibration. Something that I want to talk about as another, we're kind of like back and forth, but uh, as a, as a reason that we're doing this in a way, um, which is, is that just, you know, it, it's fascinating um, as I'm, you know, teaching this work on open your channel and, uh, you know, working with healers and these processes that the interesting thing is that it, it, a lot of it comes back to loving yourself more. <laughs> and as you raise that vibrational frequency, as that occurs within your system, what happens is that just by being in presence with you, other people's vibrational frequency starts to shift and change. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the most important things that we can remember because we think oh, well, I'm going to be, I'm being called to be a healer. So I'm doing all these things to someone and I'm like do, doing all this, you know, coaching, I'm doing all of this teaching and things. But a lot of it has to do with the proximity of the, the client or the student or whatever, or the friend to your frequency, which actually causes that frequency to raise naturally. And this is an important piece to remember because sometimes we think like, oh, well, I'm not doing enough right now. Like I'm not being called to say anything or, or do a lot of stuff to this person in a session or whatever. But there is something that's happening in this process that's very important, that's very vital. And this is an important part of raising the, the, the vibrational frequency. And one of the core reasons that we are doing this work is because the more that our frequency is raised, the more that our vibration is raised, then every person that comes in contact with us, even people at the grocery store or wherever, they're feeling it. They're having an experience that's different, that their, their energy body, even if they're not aware of the terminology around things, is tracking and paying attention to, is noticing and actually seeking to shift to meet because it wants to meet that frequency. So in this, we have this enormous potential for being a part of this radical shift in frequency for the entire population on the planet, and which will create massive change and, and make everything so much better. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. So it is a very, very selfless thing, in fact, to focus on raising your own vibration because because ultimately it means that you are being of service to everyone around you. People's radar, uh, we'll get back at this later, but this is bringing, we lost her, okay. Yeah, I lost you. So you said that it's a very selfless act to engage in raising your vibration. Yes, selfless act. Um, let's see, I really, really feel that when I'm out in the community, sometimes people just come up and ask for a hug. Now I get it, exactly, right? Really? Because, yeah, Angie, thank you. Because it feels good, like, you know, and have you ever had just like animals come up to you and just like wanna be all over you or like people are just like spilling you their life story? It's because there is a resonant frequency. That's, that's a thing is- uh, You go out to a place and children really respond to it for sure. And you have people who are like, I don't know why I'm telling you this. And, and I, I just, it feels so good to be around you is kind of a thing that people say to people. They're just like, I'm not sure, I'm not sure, or I don't know what you do, but I just like really want to be around you. And uh, so, you know, this is something that, this is something that happens and something that we're like a, a yes to. It might make us feel a little bit mm -hmm. more like, okay, well, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> Okay, you can be around me. <laughs> yes, those exact words. <laughs> For sure. And you know, remembering vibration frequency, that in itself is an act of service, ultimately. Mm -hmm. Because it's that, again, when we're living, oh, I remember, I got off on a little like tangent earlier. I was talking about like creative versus consumptive living. And we're in a, when we're in a low vibration, we're in consumptive living. It's like, what can I bring to myself what can I take what can I eat what can I consume what television can I watch what 
um, drugs can I take or unhealthy experiences can I have either to numb out so that I'm not feeling my low vibration or that I can subconsciously, it can be that we're doing that, those unhealthy patterns, because we're trying, Kat, like you were saying, we think that will raise our vibration. So it's very consumptive. As opposed to when we are truly high vibration, it's a very creative life. We're putting stuff out. You know, you have projects, you're making art, you're making friends, you're um, singing songs, you're sharing, you're writing, you're cheering people up, you're going out and exercising and you're leading activities, right? It's think of people in your life. I'm 100% sure that everybody watching or listening to this can think of people who they know who feel like they suck all the energy out of the room. They're very consumptive. That's very low vibration is again, that consuming, like trying to raise their vibration by sucking it in as opposed to people who bring everybody up. That's very high vibration. It's very creative energy going out. So again, like another way to think about it is um, low vibration, consumptive, like consuming. Oh my gosh, I'm trying to heal. I'm trying to fix myself. High vibration is very creative. How can I be of service? How can I put this out in the world? Beautiful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So I think we've given you like a lot of a lot of tools and things to to think about. I want to uh, press everybody into one of my favorite YouTube videos. Michelle, <laughs> dog barks. Michelle like spilled her water. Um, one of my very favorite YouTube videos. Uh, I'm not sure what the title of it would be, but is about uh, bees who raise their vibrational frequency in order to combat the wasp. So there's a wasp that comes in and is going, is attacking the, the hive. And the, the video is just, it's, it's a fabulous representation of what's going on, that basically the bees start raising their vibrational frequency by shaking and vibrating and vibrating and vibrating. And they vibrate so quickly that they produce so much heat that it actually cooks the wasp from the inside out. And it is an amazing uh, a show of basically what we're doing. The more that we raise our vibration, we're basically cooking out all of the, you know, the negative aspects of ourselves, but also, you know, the, the beings and, and the energies that are outside of us, which are maybe of a lower frequency or they're looking to get us or, or whatever. And it's like, oh, well, how do I protect myself from, you know, maybe I'm doing spiritual work, channeling, working with, you know, mediumship. Oh, how do I protect myself? How do I protect myself? Well, one of the best ways to protect yourself is just to raise that vibrational frequency. Like the bees don't attack and sting and and you know, or put up a door to their hive. No, they're like, oh, you're in here. Come on in. We're going to vibrate you to death. So uh, check that out on YouTube because it's like it's so fascinating that this is like nature is is showing us the way. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of raising the vibration, Bruno was using sound to clear and re- yeah. Right as I was taking a drink of water, he barked and I spilled all over myself, but. Um, speaking of raising the vibration, I know, um, we haven't done an episode yet on shamanic sexuality, but orgasms, I mean, that's like ultimate raising the vibration and really like, like sent, and there's whole practices of, um, you know, different tantric practices and different sex magic practices of like using the energy of pleasure and euphoria to significantly raise and lightning rod your vibration to a whole new level. Speaking of vi- vibration. Yeah. Okay. Let's just end there. <laughs> Ending on orgasm. Orgasm. <laughs> uh, we're not doing that for Valentine's Day. We have a different plan um, for a Valentine's Day episode. But yeah, let's uh, let's end on that note and give everybody, you know, homework. Brilliant. So yeah, you have homework. You have a lot of homework, and like the homework for. <coughs> fun. It, 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 I mean, sometimes it's not so fun. Oh, I'm going to maybe cry and scream and roll around on the floor and, and be, be kind of a weirdo. But, it, you know, dance and sing and play and laugh and be with your friends and have orgasms and cuddle and, uh, you know, connect with angels and, and 
the spirits and beings that that inspire you and you know be in nature have parties where you know you get to talk about how great that you, everyone you know is like it's like whatever it is that's going to make you feel like you are raising your vibration will happen and also ask for help ask your guides ask your angels these beings of light i want to raise my vibrational frequency will you please work on me you know while i'm in this meditation while i'm laying here on the floor while i'm asleep uh today uh you know will you help me to raise my vibrational frequency so that I am able to be of greater service to the people and to this planet. Give them a good reason. And uh, let it happen with grace and ease. Oh, my vibrational frequency is raising too quickly. It feels intense. It feels like too much. Oh, can you back off a little bit and make it a little bit easier? Maybe slow it down a little bit. It feels really intense for me right now. So start having those conversations, asking for help in whatever, which direction that you, that you feel like it needs to go. Mm -hmm. So I thought of another um, yeah. example real quick. <laughs> Speaking of uh, like growing pains, right? Like energetic growing pains, you know, as remember, I don't know if anybody remembers what it was like when you were a kid and you were getting taller all of a sudden and it just like this like achy feeling. I don't super actually remember that for myself, I think, but I remember my younger brother going through it and just how sore he was all the time because his bones were getting longer all of a sudden and just like the, the muscles and everything being stretched out and getting stronger. Same thing energetically is like, if you feel like you're just being stretched and sore and like, you know, as you are raising your vibration again, you're running energy through new pathways. It is okay to ask it, ask for, as you're asking your guides for help, ask it to like be a little more comfortable mm -hmm. and be, be aware of that. Don't think that there's anything wrong necessarily, but just know that that's part of the process is it can be really uncomfortable because you're also dying while that's going on. Like, you know, not to freak anybody out, but like the parts of you that don't fit anymore are, are leaving you. And there are parts of you that are, um, that are slipping away or parts of you that are actively being pushed out and you are growing into a different person and shifting your identity structure. So I'm saying all of this, not to freak anybody out or overwhelm you, but it's, <laughs> I mean, it's a good thing ultimately. And it doesn't mean that it's not going to be uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> so we're not literally salt will help. Like your minerals are important at this time. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Okay. Well, so if, if you are having, if you have any questions about this, if stuff's coming up for you and you feel like, well, I don't know, they didn't cover that. Or is this a thing? Or am I doing this right? reach out to us. You can reach us via uh, email at shaman sister sessions at gmail.com. You can reach out to us on our Facebook page, shaman sister sessions. And we have 50 prior episodes, which cover so many things you wouldn't believe on both our YouTube channel, shaman sister sessions, and also on iTunes and Stitcher. And we would so appreciate and adore you if you would give us a high rating and a thumbs up and leave us a comment on YouTube or whatever there is that you would be willing to, uh, um, you know, help us out and mm -hmm. share our work, uh, share these episodes. If you find anything that has helped you to share this on Facebook or in a Facebook group that you're a part of. We would so appreciate it because we love doing this work so much. And mm -hmm. I believe, what, what do we have an episode for next week, Michelle, already? Yes. And next week, our, we're recording on Wednesday, not Tuesday. Uh, so Wednesday at 1 o'clock Pacific time. And we're speaking about alchemy. So, you know, we haven't talked about that specifically yet. We've talked about a lot of different, you know, kind of talking around it, but we're actually going into alchemy, the art and science of transformation. So again, that is Wednesday, the 24th at one o'clock Pacific time. And, uh, and to put on people's radar, a couple of things uh, for those of you in the Southern California area, Kat is having her open your channel retreat at which I am guest facilitating 
Um, and that is February 9 through 11, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so, and there is still time to register for that. There's also time um, to jump in retroactively and, and listen to the classes as kind of a, a warm up and prepare for the retreat. So that is coming up uh, in February. That following weekend, Saturday the 17th, Kat and I are, um, this is also in Southern California while I'm down there, um, we're facilitating a visionary code activation ceremony slash class, which is going to be so much fun. It's going to be great. And, uh, and next week when we talk about alchemy, I'll be sharing a little bit with you about one of my projects that I have going on right now that I am absolutely thrilled about working with alchemy and taking people through that journey. So if you're interested, again, please reach out. You know how to get a hold of us. And next week, Wednesday, one o'clock. Mm -hmm. And if you are in the Southern California area, we will have the opportunity to uh, work with both Michelle and I for a few sessions and we probably won't have very many available. So if you know that you are going to be available, we're going to be in Orange County. So if you know that you, this is something that you're interested in to have both of us working with you in one session, it is ridiculous. So much fun. So amazing. And mm -hmm. uh, we love doing that kind of work together. So uh, reach out to us right away so that we can get you on the schedule for that. Yes, and last time when Kat was up here in Portland in at the end of November, we sold out completely both of our um, our workshop that we were teaching and of our one on one or two on one session. So please let us know as soon as possible so we can get you on the books. But, all right. Well, thank you so much for joining us, and thank you for you're welcome. It is a joy to offer this work to you. Yay. Yay. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Angie. Thank you, Andrew. And so we'll see you next week. All right. Bye. Yay.